There's a chance that it's from nearby. You're saying this bird That's just walked in oh. here. Yeah. yeah. You're telling me you opened this door yeah. and this bird just walked yeah. in here. Yes. Hello my fellow sniffers and flighters. My name is Marlene McCohen. So we are about to go on an adventure. Welcome to the channel. That is my macaw, Rocky. We are here to teach you, educate you, and make you love birds. And this is my life with my rescue parrots. Which, if you don't have birds, might seem like meh. But if you love animals and you don't know how amazing birds are and how crazy and how they love to dance and sing and play and throw tantrums and talk with subtitles and I have a little gangsta, then this is the channel for you. But today, let me tell you what happened. I was minding my own business about to make a video when I got a phone call. It was from a number that I guess I didn't save and it was from somebody I met at T-Mobile that sold me my phone because I love meeting people everywhere and talking to them and apparently getting their phone number and he goes, this is very very weird, but I am right here with an Egyptian gray. I'm like, oh really, an Egyptian gray? What's an Egyptian gray? He goes, uh, uh, an African gray. I'm like, I thought so. How did that happen? He's like, it just flew into my friend's sunroom. I'm like, really? Okay. I'm like, send me a picture. He goes, I think the neck is broken. So check out, check out this picture, guys. The bird's like this. The bird's just keeping an eye on him. I'm like, I don't think the neck's broken, but has it moved? He's like, it hasn't moved the neck. So I was about to go to an event today. I was really excited about it. I was gonna have a social life for once, but instead I'm going to go help them out with this bird. Now, I found on Parrots911 two potential owners. He's contacted both of them. One's gonna come see the bird tomorrow and one is out of town but in the meantime they need me to take the bird because they don't have anything not a cage nothing for this bird so canceled my event sorry ll shout out to my good friends that totally understand that i need to go help a bird looks to me like the bird got in kind of an altercation with another animal his eye is all scratched up it just makes me kind of want to take him and hug him not that that's possible Vinny, i gotta show you guys what Vinny's doing right now what are you doing i got him all locked up so i could go are you dancing We're gonna go get that ready. So for those of you who come to this channel to learn, 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 and be entertained, when you go to get a bird, you always wanna take a carry-on. I'm gonna take this carry-on with me and then I'm gonna mark it. I use my carry-ons all the time to carry Vinny in and out. So this carry-on will not be used. It'll be thoroughly washed before it's used again. That's just kind of like a quarantine thing. This bird will not be next to any of my birds. George is out of town, so he's gonna come back and be like, <sighs> What the heck? And you know how it is in true Marlene fashion. I don't like to let him know what's going on until he sees it. But honestly, I feel confident that one of those two people actually are the people that the bird belongs to. And I'll tell you why. Because this bird was flighted. Since it's a flighted bird, it could have gotten really far. So as you guys see, I put this in here. So the first thing I find out is if the bird is injured. Because if it's injured, it's gonna need to go to the vet. And the funny thing, when you find like an animal that isn't yours, it becomes your responsibility. The second thing would be to find the owner. That is going on all of the Facebook pages, Facebook groups. I always love Parrots 911. It's one of the most popular ones, so I feel like almost everyone's posted there. He has contacted all of the potential owners. The bird is gonna be frightened. What do you do? It's not gonna wanna just jump on anyone, right? It's a African gray, they're timid to begin with. I obviously advised him to give the bird water. The first thing, people don't think of these things right away, they get nervous. He gave the bird some water and then he's like, what do I feed it? One thing that is very easy to always give a pet, not a duck, but definitely a bird, is bread. Everyone has it in their home. Is that the most nutritious thing for a bird? No, but it's got some good carbs. Now when I get there, we can work on getting the bird back to a really nice healthy diet. The bird probably lost electrolytes because who knows how long it's been out there. So we want to make sure that the bird has coconut water, but I'm going to go see the condition. The bird definitely got in an altercation with another animal. So let's go see the verdict. Okay guys, so I'm here. Never been here. I don't know these people. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, I'm gonna put this down to try to figure more out. Oh, baby. Yeah, he's really timid. He's been trying to petting him. Hi. But Isn't he's that you? Yeah. He okay. seems very sweet. He just seems scared. Hi. Hi, how are you? It's okay. 
Okay, did you have like a little animal attack? It looks like you got in a little altercation there, huh, baby? Do you want to step up? Step up, baby. Step up. You want a head scratch? Find your mommy. Do you want to step up? You can come to me. Step up. Step up. It's okay. It's okay. It's alright. You like that? Yeah. Are you the good baby? What happened? You basically just got lost. You hungry? I see what happened. Somebody got you. Somebody got you. Who got you? Come on, step up. Step up. You're okay. Step up. Come on, you're okay. It's okay. Yeah, you're okay. Okay, guys, so I couldn't film it because I was chasing him around. But basically, what I did was use a little towel to cover my hand for safety, scoop them up, and put them in here. Here we are. <laughs> you guys have people contacting you that it could be their bird, right? Yes. So you're gonna give them my info and they'll come see me tomorrow. So far, the bird's name could be Beetlejuice or Maximus. I'm gonna take you home and so at least you could sleep like a good night in a house. There's a chance that it's from nearby. You're saying this bird That's just walked in too. here. Yeah. yeah. You're telling me you opened this door yeah. and this bird just walked yeah. in here. Yes. And you checked all your neighbors. Yeah, we asked all our neighbors and they're like, this lady just lost a cat. It might be worth it to print flyers and put them that's up in I, this neighborhood. And said. also you guys should post on the Nextdoor app. Whatever you oh, do, yeah. post on the Nextdoor app and then just contact me if anyone responds. Cause yeah, that's what she was saying. She was like, nothing's on Nextdoor, so. Nothing's on Nextdoor? Like, as far as This like, bird could have come from far. Well, you see this bird had an altercation with an animal. Do you see yeah, all the, all the scratches? scratches. Yeah. yeah. That's why he seems so scared. Yeah. He didn't seem mean, he just seems scared. Yeah. First of all, do you know how rare it is for an African Grey to like be kind of friendly with other people? Really? Yeah, and so, the, but the thing is, any bird in turmoil is going to be nicer than when. Oh, because no, they're they don't they're just out of energy. Oh. They're exhausted. Keep going on all of the parrot Facebook yeah. like groups and also next door. Post something today on next door if you yeah. guys can. Send okay. me the link. You okay? Did you enjoy Here your adventure? Go. Do you like music? We're gonna find out in the car. <laughs> Did he She's talk whistling. a lot? Whistling. 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 Anything yeah. else? No. Thank you guys. Okay, you guys oh, have my number. Oh, if you find anything, keep no, working because it's like somebody's big baby, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. All right. Hi, baby. You okay? It's gonna be okay. We're gonna go home. We're gonna set you up. And I think you're gonna have some visitors tomorrow and people are gonna see if you belong to them, okay? One thing is, even though this bird let me pet his head and everything, sometimes when they're distraught, you know, it's they're a little nicer. The bird didn't really want to step up to me, so if somebody comes and this bird steps up to them, I'm literally gonna know, like, this is your bird. Unfortunately, the bird doesn't have a band with the eye. Definitely, the bird got into an altercation. What a survivor though, huh? Okay guys, huh? See what we're gonna do here. I was donated a cage, again, that needs washing. Every time I'm donated a cage, some bird gets found. This bird, I'm confident we're gonna find the owner. It's an African gray, I mean. The budgie, there's always the chance that, you know, it got out of an aviary. This cage doesn't even have stands. So I'll have to put a few perches and I'll clean it off. I can't pressure wash it myself, but I'm gonna give it like the best cleaning that I can myself. Hi guys. Basically, I am cleaning off this cage. Well, I already did the best that I could alone. Well, I had to do it alone without the camera because it's hard to, like I like to get down and dirty. So basically I use a cloth because most of the problem with the cage is that it's kind of dusty. Kind of needs like a really good, 
pressure washing, honestly. But main things is to get off the dust right now. I have a cloth with warm water, some baking soda. So we did that. And now I gotta go find purchase for his cage because there's no purchase in that and then I gotta wash the bowls. That's what I'm gonna go do now. Lucky purchase came in the first feathered fun box, so I might have a few that I could put in this cage, hopefully if I have extra. Okay, I wanna show you guys why it's really hard to put things in the cage yourself. So for example, this, if I'm trying to get this in to put this on the other side, myself would be hard. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? So one person has to hold it on one and one on the other side or it won't hold itself up. Unless you can reach your hands all around the cage. I can't. So I put this bar here. So I filtered a bar through one side and out the other side to essentially hold up what I'm trying to get in. Cause this is what I came up with to do it myself. And then I can, the other part of it is the fact that I'm carrying the camera. But you guys get the point. And then I'll be able to screw it on now myself. I also decided to keep this bar here for extra support because it's a very thin perch. It's what I have. I'm gonna clean the bowls. This way the bird can get to the food, the water, everything's strong. I put in a little chew toy. I have another toy here, we'll see. Baby, you all right? You look exhausted. African greys are like slow assassins, right? They could be your friend one second and then just bite you. Guys, I don't know. Let's see also the state of the bird, where he feels comfortable perching. I feel like the bird's neck is in a little bit of a... It's not hurting. It could have also come from a previous situation with a low cage. Okay. All right, Tracy, I'm coming. Can you step up? If you step up, I want to take you where you need to go. So he feels the love, but no pressure. Kinda looks like the beak on African gray I saw online. I lifted your head, that's good. Am I carrying him over there in the potty? Okay. So this is how I got him to step up before. You guys could see I wrap my hand in a towel just in case he bites. Or if you see, then if he bites, then I won't react at all. And also he'll have a really good grip on here. And so it's just a little gentle and I'll push him up onto it a little so I can hoist him up. Good bird. Good bird, you're on me now. This works very often. This, sometimes if a bird is a little unstable or possibly hurt or you don't wanna get bit, but you know. I do this so that one, there's easy grip. You want the bird to feel safe. You don't want to feel like if he bites, you're going to be scared. So you don't want him to jolt. I'm going to sit here and just let him understand what's going on and look at him. How do you? Now this could be from an attack with an animal. This could be from him flying and falling. This could be anything. You see he's hunched over. That's why he may need to be perched very low in the cage, so we're gonna find out. Yeah, he's lifted his head, that's good. Okay, good, good baby, that's good. That's good, that makes me happy. Let's just see if he'll perch in there. I want him to go rest, and I want him to eat. Okay, you understand the house? You understand? So there's a few things here. One is that he has Okay, Rocky. 
Okay guys, there are, are a few things to notice here. The first thing you notice is that the bird stepped up to the cage, which means the bird is familiar with cages. You might be like, of course, it's a pet bird, it's an African gray. But here in California, we have an introductory species of Amazon. You guys remember when I found that Amazon, the Amazon was actually really sick, which is why it appeared to become tame in my arms, but really it was just dehydrated. It had a concussion and it had among other issues. But once we fixed the bird of its issues and got it healthy again and brought the bird back, it became clear that the bird was indeed a wild Amazon. So you may come across a certain kind of bird, maybe a ringneck, maybe a Quaker, something that has created wild flocks that needs help and then you'll have to differentiate. And when that Amazon was in my house, it didn't know how to perch. It was just like flying around the house trying to land on things that birds don't know how to land on. Plus Lou confirms with me that it was definitely a wild Amazon. So that's the first thing, the way the bird takes to the cage is gonna be important. He's getting a little territorial right now. He does and want me to move him and put him in the cage. He's at a fragile state, so I'm not gonna force him if he feels comfortable right here, but I am gonna bring his water and food up to him in this moment and see what he does because he can't get dehydrated and he needs to eat. Now they did feed him a little bit, as I told you guys, they fed him some bread and he took to it. Sometimes when it comes to seeds and pellets and different variations of those things, when you give it to a bird, it's like they're not used to it. So I'm gonna try to give the bird something soft because I don't want him to stress too hard to try to eat. I have some tops pellets here, so we might um, work on that. And then just some electrolytes. So right now I'm just gonna let him sit here. My baby. Do you have to take it from the side? No, okay. This has a shell, so if he's able to take this, that would be pretty impressive if he puts his hands up. If he puts his little footsie up, that's a good sign. That's why I gave him something with a shell. I just wanted to see how he would handle that, how his neck would move handling it, what kind of control he has. So far, looking pretty good. I want to tell you guys something weird. So you may not understand it, but check it out. After he eats, he's going to eat, he's going to focus on the food, and then he's gonna look up at me. You'll see it with his eyeballs. Like right now he's focusing, and then he's gonna look up at me, okay? And he's gonna start processing like who gave him that food. But you see he's keeping his eye on me. He wants to wipe his beak and he won't even because he's gotta keep his eye on me and also because his neck might hurt. So I'm curious if he'll do that, how he'll do that. He's doing it himself without scratching it on something. Yeah, you see? I know bird behavior, all different birds. I could see in their eyes what they're gonna do next. You gotta learn your birds so well down to like the millisecond of what they do. So usually like a bird, especially a bird like in this situation, he's still scratching his beak. He's gonna eat, he's gonna focus on the food, how the food, and then he's going to at some point focus on you, the human being, and be like, huh, that person gave it to me. When that bird is focused on you, smile. Make a nice calm voice. Be at your calmest. Don't be moving around. Don't go, oh my God, guys, he ate. Like, calm, smile. They can feel your emotions and they'll pick up on your energy. Even if your energy is well intending, if you have a very fast moving nervous energy at a time like this, it's not gonna suit up with what the bird needs. They need to know right away that they're gonna be okay, okay? And also I want them to know that there's more where that came from. How do you feel? So I'm gonna get him another one. I don't know how to explain this except that I've had birds since I was seven years old and that's longer than some people who are really old have been in the business and say, oh, I've had birds and worked with birds for X amount of years. Trust me, they'd be shocked to know how long that is for me. I've been watching them since I was a kid and, and what I learned mostly is that they work off your energy and each one is different. Like an African gray needs different things than an Amazon and then a cockatoo. He's gonna focus on me less now because he already knows who's giving him the food and he can trust enough to focus on that. But in a second, he's gonna go right back to that. You see that tilt of the head? They're making him very curious because he can hear them but he can't see them. Now look, there's a little ladder here. If I move this ladder, there is a chance 
that by moving it, even though I'm gonna make this water more accessible, it's gonna freak the bird out. See that? Have to know all these things and be willing to take a chance or not. Why are you being so loud? Rocky? Why are you being so loud? Rocky, say hi to everyone on YouTube. Good boy. Okay, I got him in. It wasn't the easiest thing. I had to kind of pick him up a little bit. I couldn't do it with the camera. Okay guys, so he wasn't eating the pellets. You just never know what kind of diet a bird was on before you got him. So I gave him a seed mix and he's eating, which is a really good sign. I'm gonna close this. Rocky's totally in need of his space. He wants to be over here. He wants to watch TV. Gotta get this TV on or he's gonna get upset. Ah, it's coming. And I have to get all the birds fed. Not what I thought I'd be doing today, but I rolled him over here. Ignore Josie for one second. I'll show you why. The birds are not usually like that. Their routine is being messed up by me focusing on this bird. So what's happened here is I can dim the lights in here and get him used to kind of being alone before covering him, okay? okay. It's a good sign that he's hanging upside down and everything, but I will tell you that it's very odd. Maybe not too odd, but this bird loves to put his head upside down, like upside down. Like it literally looked a little creepy for a second. I'll try to show you tomorrow or next video if I can. I gotta go take care of the other babies. They're waiting for me. So I'm gonna cover this bird a little bit right now. I'm just gonna let him relax because I just moved him to a new room. That might have just changed up everything he felt, but I can't have him in rocky section. I'm just gonna dim the lights till he gets used to relaxing like this. And later I'm gonna come in and check on him and he'll be better once I get these birds outside quiet. So I'm gonna have to leave you guys here now because I have to focus on, I know, I have to focus on getting them all to bed and giving their attention and also their little dance party which will be quieter today than it usually is. Join me on Instagram so you guys can be updated with all the activities and our little nighttime dance parties at Marlene McCohen. But guys, before I do any of that, I obviously have to go get kind of washed up, make sure that I'm ready and prepared and completely clean for these birds just because of quarantine. Pretty sure this is somebody's pet and we're gonna find it. I hope that we find this bird's owner tomorrow. Yeah, I just, I'm praying. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for joining. I'm coming! Enter weird voiceover commercials. I guess. Bye. Hey guys, the Feathered Fun Box is our new subscription box of toys, treats, and other surprises for you and your bird. So don't forget to check the link below and get in on that. And guys, don't forget to check out my new line of organic bird food called Marlene Signature Blend, made with tops. The link is below.